as seems to be getting more common. Today's packages start off with a choice delivery order. So I ordered a bunch of ESP32 related stuff all at once. And so it's going to come in this one shipment. I have to use this magnifier to see that it's an ESP32 C3 Super Mini module. And the reason I wanted these, I maybe want to look at replacements for things like ESP8266. Maybe this is newer, smaller, better, and maybe the 8266 could become harder to get. So I might as well just start getting used to these. So this being the C3 variant, I previously bought the C2 variant, but I didn't realize it's not really supported in the Arduino IDE. So I, it was easier to buy the C3. So I'll have to see if I can get those working. Then there was one of those sales where you click on an item you're shopping for, and it brings up this sort of sale page with all the thumbnails. So I scrolled through and I saw some sort of a good deal. So then I got two sets of an ESP32 module with one of these breakout boards. A couple of USB ports and a DC power jack and breakout headers for the pins. And it looks like this is for the 38 pin version of the module. So it must have been this one that came with it. So that may make it easier to use this in certain cases because I made my own breakout board, but it was only for the 30 pin module. And these modules have the CH340 USB chip on it, which is related to why I bought several modules. This one has the CP2102 and this one has the CH9102. So combining these three with these different USB interfaces, that means they are different PCB designs. So there may be different antenna properties. And then I have the older CH340 based board. The difference between that one and the new one I just got with the CH340. Here the Wi-Fi antenna is hanging over the board. So it has clearance and possibly better Wi-Fi antenna tuning. And also this one with the overhanging antenna, it also has the IPEX or UFL antenna jack on there. So if I need to set a jumper to disable on board and go with an external antenna, that's where this stuff comes in. SMA to UFL plug. So I can plug this into the module. Then I can just plug in one of these antennas here and try using this instead of the onboard and just compare. Because recently I made a video on the other channel where I just started looking into certain aspects of the ESP32, particularly how the CH340 tends to be set up on these modules to run the transmit and receive at 5 volts going to the 3.3 volt ESP32 module. So I just wanted to try three different USB transceivers as well as a better positioned onboard antenna and finally an offboard antenna and just see if there's maybe a better option out of these for one reason or another to continue buying for better performance. And this item came in on its own shipment without a bundled choice delivery. These separate out as eight two-pin surface mount packages to dip. I can't remember, is this like 1206 and 0805? Or else 0805 and 0603? But I didn't really get these for resistors or capacitors. I was thinking more like LEDs or even just diodes, whether it's a Zener or some fancy shop key, because I do have a bunch of things like that where I would want to specifically use the surface mount one, but I want to experiment on a breadboard before I put it on a PCB. Sometimes I might just take a perf board kind of thing and just try to blob the surface mount part on, but why not get these? They're low cost and I can obviously get a whole lot of them. So one reason I would want to use these for LEDs 
If I have a whole string of maybe a hundred surface mount LEDs all the same, but I don't know the part number because I got them on AliExpress, different LEDs of the same color can have different efficiencies, and so to get a certain brightness, you'll probably need a different current limit resistor value for each different kind of LED. So maybe I can take one of them, put it on a breakout board, easier to work with, and then I can figure out what resistor value to use to get a suitable brightness, and then just make note of that and go ahead putting those LEDs on circuit boards. Because I've had situations where the LED was way too bright or way too dim, and then I have to mess around on the final circuit board, so I'd rather just do it experimentally this way. A couple of packages that I think belong together. I think I just cut this open by opening the other one. Well, might as well go through here. Surface mount 8574, and this should be the 8575 16 channel GPIO expander. So I squared C interface for 8 or 16 channels. I wanted these as a module where I could put headers and plug this into a PCB, or if I want to stick with eight channels, I can just directly use this dip. But really, by the time I put decoupling capacitor and whatever other wiring to get to it, it's probably the same as this. But the idea on a PCB I have coming up, these are meant to be optional, so I just need headers or a board socket on the board, and optionally I can plug these in if I want to use extra features. Otherwise I would have just designed the surface mount chips right onto the board. And I went shopping on Amazon for copper foil tape. Might as well make sure it's conductive. All right. So this can be useful if you just need to make some sort of a conductive area. Even if you want to cut it into small strips and make circuit tracks, so it could be used for some experimental setups. Easy to get a long strip of this stuff if you want. One of the main uses I had was shielding. So maybe inside guitar plastic enclosures, if I want to make the inside shielded, I can surround it with this in there. Same with inside a guitar electronics cavity or pickup cavity where any of the pots are, jacks, or the pickups. Putting this in there for shielding and then grounding this can help get rid of some noise. This seemed to be the cheapest I could get this amount for, so I went for it. And there's another Amazon shipment, but one of these AliExpress orders has similar products, so I'm going to open that too. I got a couple of RJ45 pin header breakout modules, so the eight pins of the Ethernet cable plus a shield if I want. This is again related to some upcoming project stuff where I need to be able to plug a cable into each end and do stuff with it. So testing on a breadboard or on a PCB, this is going to allow me to hook up network cable and do some stuff with it. And there's never room at the end for these large packages. First I'll get this one out of the way. Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Paint and Primer. Basically a spray-on clear coat. Last summer I bought the gloss version of this because I was spraying over water slide decals to protect them. And if I'm going to be working with guitar circuit enclosures and I'm going to want to protect whatever painting or decals or handwritten stuff I put on, whether I want clear, matte, or gloss, now I'll have that option. And these are boots, so that slides over the plug on the end of the cable, helps protect that tab that latches in, and it just goes along the cable a little. Maybe it gives it slight string relief. Wall plate with a Cat6 jack in it. I may take that one out. So this one already just takes a made cable. You don't have to crimp it on here with one of those punch down tools or something. So I'm not sure if I'm going to use this module insert, 
but this is going to go on the wall in what I call the computer room because I've been using Wi-Fi in there, but I'm setting up some other stuff. I'm putting a Proxmox server and it needs to be hardwired. So I'm going to take the risk and try to cut into the wall, drill down into the basement and then run that cable directly over to where all the electrical panel and other networking cables all terminate with the incoming internet service. So I'm on some Ethernet missions. So there's lots of projects going on. I can make some guitar effect enclosures and properly paint them and get them clear coated. Copper foil for any shielding or other custom circuit experimenting. ESP32s and some Wi-Fi experimenting. Upcoming PCB project modules and getting the house more set up for proper networking. So it's going to be a busy several weeks. Thanks to Patreon and channel supporters for helping make all this possible.